Forest Oddities. This urban legend of the Pacific Northwest is more than a myth. It has been drawn to the bug zapper in my backyard multiple times. Making high clicking sounds and feeding on stray dogs and hobos, this 10-foot humanoid is terrifying, but gets easily trapped behind screen doors. Do not touch! Dissolves into a hundred fluttering moths on contact! Believed to start out as a caterpillar man, but this has never been observed. Yet. Seen hovering by lampposts and stoplights. Beard comes. These living ambulatory beards, some with mustaches, roam the forest in packs and will steal the aftershave out of your camping gear. They nest on trees, bushes, and lumberjacks' faces. One tried to attack me once and I barely escaped clean-shaven! Always carry a pocket razor. Portal Potty. A mysterious system of space-warping outhouses seems to be strategically spreading throughout the town's forest. I was able to successfully use one to transport myself, but wound up in the middle of the desert and had to hitchhike home. No idea who created them, but I'm never going in again. Sometimes, it's just best to hold it. Scampfire. These spider-like beasts pose as campfires, then spring to life when you get close. They like to eat campers' marshmallows and beans, but will feed on pretty much anything combustible. Can be doused with water, but will hiss. Kill Billy. Feral, fanged, glowing-eyed hillmen will suck your blood and steal your overalls. These may be the beings responsible for the cursed outhouses. Communicate through grunts and ham-boning. When you hear bluegrass music, run for the nearest convenience store. They can't get in. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Steve! Never actually seen its face. Covered in moss and mushrooms, hides in the forest, big enough to pick up my car and eat it, which it did years ago. My theory is that this is some species of tree giant. Older than the town itself. Its legs look remarkably like trees, and considering how many lumberjacks are nearby, that probably explains why it's such a recluse. I tried communicating with it by speaking in low tones through a megaphone, but it threw a deer at me, and so I decided to leave it alone. I call it Steve, because it really acts like a Steve. Soothe Skeetos. Their bites spell out dire messages for your future, except they're frequently misspelled. I was told to... Batch out for Will, which, as far as I could tell, is total nonsense. The Invisible Wizard. Pointy hat! With a hat like that, it has to be a wizard. Look at that ridiculous thing! The wand is really quite beautiful. Just stare at it. Don't believe your eyes? Good, you don't have to. This bizarre sorcerer is completely impossible to see with the naked eye. However, with night vision goggles, I was able to get a brief glance of him trying on suits in my closet. He later turned my goggles into a bat. Piercing blue eyes, chiseled cheekbones. Could be a model if he wasn't invisible. Belt of potions. These must be what he drinks to stay invisible. And possibly to teleport through time. I don't know where he's from, but judging by the smell, I'm going to say it was a time when they hadn't yet invented showers. How to get rid of him? I may need to find another wizard to perform a wizardism. More on those in Journal 2. WHY IS HE HERE?! The Abominable Bro-Man. What I would have given to find an actual Yeti or Bigfoot. Instead, the only cryptid I've discovered in local peaks is this obnoxious, soda-swilling ape beast who can only say bro, righteous, and chill sesh. I assume he ate a hiker and stole his frayed baseball cap and cargo shorts and has since started emulating him. Shaved space for tribal band tattoo. Barf fairies. Unfortunately, exactly what they sound like. Had to wear a poncho to study these in the wild. It's possible they're vomiting as a form of communication, but I didn't stick around long enough to find out. Whatever it is they're eating, I need to watch out for it. Leprechaun. A disappointment to unicorn enthusiasts and leprechaun hunters alike, these giggling freaks of nature are found near rainbows and boxes of sugary cereal with colorful marshmallow shapes. I was searching a nearby field for four-leaf clovers to use in a luck experiment when I encountered this specimen. He said, top of the morning to you, then proceeded to chew on my sideburns. I picked him up by the horn and threw him as far as I could, but he trotted right back. Their horns are musical and play a constant loop of Danny Boy. It is very irritating. Gold coins fell out of his beard. I pocketed a few, but later discovered they were plastic! 
Everything about this creature is frustrating. I shudder to think how such a horrific being came into this world. Although, for the record, I will state that actual unicorns are just as annoying. Some creatures in Gravity Falls inspire awe. Others inspire... Ah! I was immediately disturbed when I witnessed a flock of these malformed mallards swimming together in the center of the lake. Responds every time to this duck call. I purchased a duck whistle at the bait shop to see if one would return my call. Indeed he did. But when his mouth opened, I could see his intestines and other vital organs. It was horrifying. Although anatomically quite fascinating. I quickly lost my appetite and turned over my crackers and sandwich to the birds, who were happy to finish them off. One might make a good bet. That is, if you could get over the whole visible intestines thing. Question Quail. Owls say who. These birds say where, why, and when. Known by their black question markings. Perhaps cousins of the apostrophe and exclamation parakeet. Cowl. Part cow, part owl. Lays milk-filled eggs. Calls the who. Even more of a paradox than its cousin. The parrot ox. Octopus. Too stupid to study. Woodpecker pecker. A miniature woodpecker that gets its meals by pecking bugs out of the back feathers of regular-sized woodpeckers. May have a woodpecker pecker pecker on its back. Need microscope to investigate. The bottomless pit. I want to get to the bottom of this mystery, but it seems impossible. This Mobius pit seems to somehow impossibly loop back on itself. Many things that are tossed in are eventually tossed right back out, but some things never return. It is nearly impossible to predict what will return and what won't. There are no discernible patterns in terms of time of day or weather conditions. Of course, socks never come back. Junk mail almost always does. Ironically, nothing ever seems to get lost on Friday the 13th. The speed at which things return also varies, but experimentation has taught me that if something does not return within 24 hours, it never comes back. One day I may have the courage to leap in out of curiosity, although I might find myself on a plane of existence that I am not ready to handle, or just waste 21 minutes telling stories to myself to keep entertained. Do not throw something in if you ever want to see it again! A bit of history. Weeks have passed, and I'm still no closer to discovering the grand unified theory of weirdness. Whenever I feel as though I've hit a roadblock, I like to read up on Gravity Falls past in the public library. This town's history may hold clues to the source of its weirdness. Gravity Falls. Assembled history. 65 million years ago, dinosaurs ruled. Until they didn't. 30 million years ago. CSO, original impact. Valley formed. Tree ring interruption slash radiation test confirm. Tell no one about this. AD 1000. Native people mysteriously evacuate town in a hurry. Describe Gravity Falls as cursed land. Leave behind treasure trove of pottery, blankets, and symbols. Some art depicts my muse and his interactions with a shaman named Modoc. Art hoarded by the Northwest. Eighteen forty two. Town is founded by Nathaniel Northwest. Quentin Trembley, man. 1849, Gold Rush. 1850, lesser known, Flannel Rush. 1851, mining ceases after miners claim sightings of prehistoric beasts. Need to investigate. 1860s, High Five, supposedly invented by Oregon Trail settlers, Gradient Fertilia Mech. Fertilia sets record of 42 children. 1883, Great Train Crash of 83. Conductor distracted by flash of light and careens off cliff. 1920. Maple syrup prohibition leads to secret pancake speakeasies. 1937. Plane crash in mountains. Woman escapes into forest. Amelia was here carved into mountainside. 1947. UFO sighted. Headed east. Ronald Sprott Sr. claims to shoot it with his shotgun. 1960. Greasy's Diner salvages crashed train parts for restaurant. 1975, my arrival in Gravity Falls. 1981, discovery of Muse, the future. 2072, giant baby takes over the universe! What? 
Odd. While researching history in the library archives, I found an unnoticed rusty ancient box with the word Pines scrawled on it, and an etching of a key. Curious, I broke it open and found this. I cannot understand the code, so the meaning is lost on me. One day I may decipher it. In researching the town lore, I have found quite a few bizarre laws and customs passed down from the Founders' days. For example, an old law forbids a horse from holding office until it is of legal age. To do what? There are also 46 different laws involving when, where, and how to court a woodpecker for marriage. Don't ask. Most of these absurd laws are attributed to Town Founder General Nathaniel Northwest. A man whose only battle skills appear to have been wearing a jacket with fringes and posing for daguerreotypes. Due to this legend, Nathaniel's descendants, including current patriarch Aldman Northwest, have enormous power in this town, owning everything from Northwest Realty to Northwest Mud Flaps to Northwest Weather Vanes. Weather Vanes that often seem to unfairly favor the directions north and west. It would seem that their power is unquestionable. However, a new piece of evidence throws the whole history of the Northwest family into an entirely different light. In my investigations, I recently made a discovery. Nathaniel Northwest may not be the founder of Gravity Falls. Imagine, his entire family legacy, a fraud. I believe the proof of this secret is buried somewhere in the enclosed document. If only I could crack the code. Hey, it wasn't so hard to crack. All you need to do is make it into a hat! I mean, this is like basic code cracking 101. Time to up your game, author! Love, Mabel. August 3rd. The strange document is proven indecipherable. Nonetheless, I believe its very existence is proof enough that the Northwest family history is a fraud. I traveled to Northwest Manor to confront Old Man Northwest with this evidence of his family's deceit, but instead was met by his snotty son, Preston, and his pet fox, Hunter. Not wanting my well-rehearsed tirade to go to waste, I launched into a list of his family's crimes! Lying about founding the town! Breaking treaties with the natives! Making self-promoting weather vanes! The boy was unmoved until I offhandedly mentioned the Great Flood of 1863. He was so panicked about what I said that he had me forcibly removed from the premises! Have I stumbled upon one more misdeed of this accursed clan? I put one cover-up aside and have begun to investigate another. The Great Secret of the Great Flood. I followed the flood path from Northwest Manor toward my own house and made a gruesome discovery. Countless lumberfolk died in the Flood of 63, and all of them were under the Northwest employment. And it seems that many, if not most, of their cadavers had washed up directly under my own porch a hundred years before I was here. No wonder Northwest Realty sold this land to me at a discount. This property was built on a graveyard, which may explain why I have had so many recent sightings of... <laughs> the Undead. Known for their pale skin and bad attitudes, these creatures are often mistaken for teenagers. Beware Gravity Falls' nefarious zombies. Much like teenagers, they move in packs. They're way susceptible to bright lights and peer pressure. EXTREMELY DANGEROUS! Many seem to be undead lumberjacks from the Flood, but since they bite new victims when they rise each month, I have seen a zombie mailman, a zombie cop, and a zombie boy scout. I refuse to buy his cookies. What if their numbers continue to increase? Must stop them at all costs. Destroy them before they rise. Their skulls are unbreakable. I cannot find a single weakness. I will watch my back at night and keep a shovel handy. Perhaps there is a non-physical way to defeat them. Since learning how dangerous my own lab grounds are, I have been researching forms of magical defense against zombies. Enchanted daggers are handy. I don't recommend double-edged swords, though. It is possible to cure zombification. Mix one cup formaldehyde, one teaspoon salt, two teaspoons paint thinner, one quart newt's blood, and a pinch of cinnamon for taste. This only works until the 10th hour following contamination. If you take it any later, you're undead meat. A zombie skull ground up can be used to coat your body. The smell will trick zombies, and anyone else really, into avoiding you. Spells. For the sake of science, I suppose I should also include a zombie summoning spell. I'm not exactly sure why I'm writing this down, but I'm a stickler for being complete about a subject. 
Stonehenge was either a spell amplification center or a place for the druids to play hide and seek. This chant, when read aloud, will conjure zombies for about 24 hours. Like most curses, it is both a blessing and a curse. Actually, it's just a curse. Corpus Levitus. Diablo Dominum. Mondo Visium. Do not read aloud! Magic items. While I'm on the subject, I would like to catalog some of the more recent magical and mysterious items I have encountered in Gravity Falls. These put the junk sold at my family's pawn shop to shame. Cloak of occasional visibility. Found in an ancient trunk at a local estate sale, this mysterious cloak makes its wearer completely invisible. Half of the time. The other half of the time, it flickers on and off again, usually at the worst possible moment, while you wander around trying to find a good invisibility signal. Very frustrating. Crystal Baldwin. Found buried deep within the mines, this crystal head of a perpetually frowning bald man, labeled Baldwin, tells your future, but always in rambling complaints. Going to rebury him. Tie of Possession, my personal invention, was created in college as part of a government-funded assignment regarding political persuasion. My prototype won first prize and was given over to men in black suits. They never gave me back the original, but luckily I kept a few others. Giant's Thumb. Found in the forest with no explanation of any kind. Not sure if it's magical, but it certainly is a good conversation starter. Currently using it as a coffee table. If I ever have a hitchhiking emergency, this will come in handy. A bit concerned that an angry thumbless giant may return to retrieve it. Truth-telling teeth. A weapon to use against deceivers. At least... Ones with no teeth. Buried beneath a tree stump in the deep forest are truth teeth, which force upon their wearer an inability to lie. Not sure who created these, but I certainly think a number of humans, politicians, lawyers, TV executives, etc., would be improved by their use. It would be quite interesting to see what my brother and mother would act like while wearing these. As an experiment, I tried wearing them for a day. They fit over my regular teeth quite snugly, but I found immediately that people don't like me much when I'm honest. I accidentally made the mailman cry. It's not my fault he's abnormally hairy! Is there a truth serum inside? Just got pulled over for speeding and admitted to it. The ticket was absurd! This is getting out of hand. I'm going to rebury these. I believe honesty is the best policy, except for when it's not. Which is often. Legends of miniature buffaloes and giant squirrels have led me to believe that there are height-altering properties hidden deep within the forest. Initial testing indicates these crystals hold the power to alter any living creature's height. Different colors perform different functions. A. Shrinking properties. B. Enlarging properties. C. Staying the same properties. This part's just a rock. Could this be responsible for the 60-foot beaver attack of 1973? Do not ingest. You don't want your stomach growing out of your ears! Height altering. Such power could be extremely useful as both a weapon and a tool. Plus, it might be nice to be an inch or two taller. I will have to search for the source of these crystals when time permits. I feel myself weary from months of exhaustive research. And although I have found many incredible things, the grand unified theory of weirdness eludes me. I need to get away and clear my head before I can make any meaningful progress on my theory. Local lumberjack boyish Dan Corduroy owns a majestic cabin in the most remote part of the woods. It has been in his family for generations, but sits unused. He hemmed and hawed when I asked to stay there for a few nights, but after paying him so handsomely for the construction of my own humble cottage, he was obliged to agree. He did, however, warn me to lock myself in my bedroom before the stroke of midnight, or else risk losing my very soul! Sounds like he's been inhaling too much sawdust. Off to the cabin for some rest and relaxation! W were my eyes playing tricks on me? I must try not to think about this. Ghosts! I now know why Dan feared lending me this cabin. It is exceedingly haunted! But if there is one thing I know about hauntings, it is that they always have a reason of some kind! Restless spirits are looking for someone to put them to rest. I will simply conduct a quick seance and ask the ghost what it needs. Although forming a circle is rather hard with one person. 
I was wrong about everything. Rather than lay the spirit to rest, my seance summoned an untold number of his unearthly brethren. The ghostly sphere is so much more complicated than I ever imagined. Over the past two sleepless nights, I have been bedeviled by no less than ten distinct varieties of phantom, each deadlier than the last. Ghosts. We start on the not-so-deadly end of the scale. Category 1. Eh. Ghosts in this category pose no threat to humanity. In fact, their fondest wish seems to be an impossible desire to rejoin the human race, or at least become the best friend of whatever person they can latch onto. The Category 1 I encountered in Dan's cabin kept trying to get me involved in G-rated adventures, oblivious to the fact that I am a man in his 30s and not a 13-year-old girl. In other words, the only way a Category 1 can harm you is by annoying you to death. Making things float is their only real power. Remember, show no interest in them and they will disappear. One word of kindness is enough to keep them around for years to come. Category 2, Pranksters. Similar in appearance to Category 1's, pranksters usually appear in groups of two or three. That's because if any of these jerks were on their own, they'd get their transparent butts kicked all the way back to the netherworld. Always have kick me or possess me signs they tape to your back. On the bright side, they love to pick on Category 1's. Category 3, Gluttons. For creatures without physical bodies, gluttons are able to generate an incredible amount of body odor. These rapacious wraiths will breeze right past you and attack the contents of your refrigerator. Unfortunately for them, they are not able to digest anything they consume. So all your food ends up on the floor. Gooer from the movie Phantom Bustifiers was clearly inspired by these horrors. Category 4. She's always watching. You've heard of paintings where the eyes follow you? Well, turn your back and this phantom literally follows you across the room. Chant to dispel ghosts. Exodus, Demonus, Spookus, Scarus, Ain't Afraidus, No Ghostus, Bumpus, Goosus, Shyamalan! Haunted paintings and image-based specters. She was able to leap from image to image, even appeared in my $5 bill. This silver mirror proved to be her only weakness. Silver! Mirror shows spirit reflection. Apparently, trapping them inside a silver mirror is the only way to stop them. I hid the mirror in the closet to try to drown out the annoying screaming. Category 4s have no indoor voice. Category 5, Soul Suckers. Soul Suckers feed on the life force of their human prey. They work slowly and silently. Given enough time, they can consume their victim's entire soul. Fortunately, I discovered the one feeding off me rather quickly and squashed him like a supernatural mosquito. I have no idea how to clean the bits of life force off Dan's dining room table. Category 6. Phantoms of Pain. These guys dress in black leather and have some sort of painful-looking jewelry sticking through various body parts. But what they really want is to inflict pain on you. Luckily, they can't touch you unless you summon them. The phantom I saw at Dan's tried to pretend that I had asked for him, but I simply said, Nope. He muttered some lame threats, shuffled his feet, and then disappeared. Jerk. Category 7. The Eternal Key. One desperate soul in each generation is transformed into the Eternal Key, an unhappy apparition who never knows what she's supposed to do or where she's supposed to be. This makes for a very noisy haunting with lots of complaining. There's only one thing that will end the Eternal Key's torment, and she has no idea what it is. Category 8. The Petrifying Rock. What she's supposed to do is open the petrifying rock, unleashing the unperceivable. Whoever he is, he sounds nasty. Luckily, these two have trouble synchronizing their schedules. The key wandered around being obnoxious for a half hour and then disappeared. Ten minutes later, the rock materialized. He gave one look around the place, sighed, and vanished. I have a feeling this happens a lot. Category 9, Dream Hipster. Dream hipsters are nefarious spirits who specialize in turning perfectly pleasant dreams into horrifying nightmares. And then get all boastful about it. Turns power naps into horror naps. These guys are never simply satisfied with scaring you to death. They need to bring you to the brink of extinction and then pull you back from it so you can admire their handiwork. Please, just kill me already if I could skip all the bragging. After haunting me for 20 hours straight, 
The ghost in Dan's place finally took a break. I fell asleep and immediately started dreaming. I was back in school, and everyone was staring at my hand. They all kept chanting, Six-Fingered Freak! Six-Fingered Freak! The more they chanted, the larger my hand grew. As usual, Kathy Crenshaw was there. I tried to shake my hand to make it stop, and it fell off my arm. My hand grew and grew and began to chase me. Suddenly I realized my hand wasn't chasing after me at all. It was chasing after my brother, and it was going to squeeze him to death. It grabbed him and lifted him into the air. I, I tried to run to help him, but my feet were frozen. Just when it looked like my brother was done for, the hipster appeared and said, Looks like you finally gave your brother a hand! The entire thing was just a setup for one of the hipster's stupid snarky puns! I awoke suddenly, thankful to be alive, and doubly thankful I wouldn't have to hear any more dumb puns. However, I soon fell asleep again, and the hipster was back with another nightmare. This time he interrupted his own work about halfway through to make sure I knew it was responsible and that I had heard his new terrible joke. More nightmares followed, and with each one, some stupid one-liner. Well, I am not giving him the satisfaction of seeing any of them written down in this journal. As far as I can tell, Category 10s are the highest category of ghosts there is, and the most dangerous. The Grim Reaper is merely the most famous of these phantoms, and not nearly the most terrifying. The Grave Filler and the Slim Creeper are both more deadly. The Reaper simply has made an effort to get itself out in the public eye more than the others. Good PR! When the temperature in my cabin dropped 30 degrees, the deer heads on the wall began screaming, and the fireplace started to fill with blood, it occurred to me that I might have a Category 10 on my hands. When this figure arrived, I knew for sure. Category 10! DANGER! Advice? Get the local rich girl to apologize to them. Tipper, if you ain't afraid of no ghosts, you're an idiot. Fearing them is totally rational. Also, ain't afraid of no is a double negative, so either way, the ghosts win. I'd had enough ghosts for one lifetime. I immediately fled from the cabin, clutching my journal and still dressed in my flannel pajamas. Run fast! What does it mean? My terrifying weekend at Dan's cabin has left me more hopeless about my investigations than ever before, and I am beginning to reach my wit's end. Six years and three journals worth of research, and I am still no closer to finding answers than when I started. What is Gravity Falls' secret? How is everything connected? And why here? What is the unified theory of weirdness? Uh, I am exhausted and must sleep on it. Perhaps rest will do me some good. The muse has spoken. I awake after the longest slumber of my life with renewed energy and inspiration. My muse, that strange whimsical creature who speaks to me in my dreams, has returned to me at last! This time with an insight so brilliant, it can only be described as divine intervention. All this time I've been looking for some common behavior to connect these anomalies, but what if what they all share is their history? A history that exists beyond our world, in another realm or dimension of weirdness. What if these various different creatures all leaked from their dimension into ours, and the leak is right here in Gravity Falls? If, if I could locate and puncture this weak dimensional fiber and record proof of the dimension beyond, I would have my grand unified theory of weirdness. It is an idea so pure and powerful, I never could have thought of it on my own. Sometimes I cannot believe how lucky I am to have come across my blessed news. How many other great historical minds has his brilliance inspired? Is he even real or just a part of my fickle imagination? No matter, his insight is surely real, as are the blueprints he left me for a portal to another dimension.